Let me ask you a question. Has this ever happened to you? I turned on my Xbox a couple of weeks ago and um, all I got was this black screen of doom. I was just curious, have you ever had that? I did, and I'll show you how to fix it. So what went wrong? Uh, that's the kind of question I was asking myself for about two days when this was going on. Um, I was literally trying everything on here uh, to try to get it to work. Uh, my controller light was lighting on, so that's a good, typically a good sign. Um, I was, you know, messing around with the controller, pressing the buttons to see if anything would be receptive to it. Um, the the weird thing about this is that after the green splash screen, I was getting some signal to my television, right? Um, if you long press the, the Xbox controller and the, the, the signal comes up, uh, or the, the little menu prompt comes up, that's actually a good sign that it's not your controller and that your Xbox is, is probably fine from a hardware perspective. Um, my Kinect was able to sense me, even though I wasn't getting any response on the screen itself. Um, so if there's power, you know, going through your troubleshooting from the wall all the way to the TV, right? The power is good. Um, you're getting power, you're getting things to your screen. Then there has to be either something that's going on with, uh, with either uh, the Xbox connecting to the TV or the software, um, the software on the actual Xbox itself. So the very first step is that I did is I disconnected everything um, from my Xbox and kind of just started over. Um, unplugged the HDMI cable, unplugged the the um, the Connect, um, and replugged everything in. Um, rebooted my my Xbox and I was still getting the same exact issue. Um, so I, I knew that it wasn't any of the cords. Um, for good measure, I did decide to just replace my HDMI cable just to make sure that the, there wasn't a signal issue between my um, Xbox and my television. And I took a good one that I use for another TV in the house that I know that gets reception between devices and, and no issues there. Um, although I didn't take a video, um, I did hook it up to another TV just to see if that just kind of roll out the TV aspect of it. And I wasn't getting, I wasn't getting anything from there. So here's what I did to fix it. Um, I had two options, maybe even three. Um, I could try to, I, I could reformat my entire Xbox, lose completely everything. Um, which that, that one's the Hail Mary option there. Um, the second option that I had was to update the firmware um, for the Xbox itself. Um, and then the last option, uh, which is the option that I actually went with, is I did a refresh of my Xbox. So there are essentially three buttons that you have to press in order to get this to work. Um, the first one is going to be the Bluetooth the second button is going to be the eject button, and the third button is going to be the uh, the power button. Now, the Bluetooth button is located on the left side of the uh, Xbox if you have it horizontal. If you have it upright, it'll be at the very top where the USB port is. Ejection button is right next to the tray uh, that you eject your discs. Power button's at the opposite end of the uh, of the Xbox itself. So very first step that you need to do is press and hold down the power button until it completely shuts off. It takes about five seconds, you'll hear a beep. Uh, once you do that, you wanna wait about five seconds before doing this method. So once that turns off, wait five seconds, then you wanna go ahead and hit the power button. As soon as you hit the power button, go ahead and hit the Bluetooth button and then the eject button until you hear a beep. It takes about three to five seconds before you, he you hear it. Now once you do, you can go ahead and release those buttons and then look at your screen. Your screen should automatically throw you into the safe mode screen where you have uh, four options. Now three of them are probably only gonna be available um, by default. So you have the continue button which will throw you right back into 
the start menu of uh, the Xbox um, like you're rebooting as normal. You have the reset this Xbox button, which we'll talk about in a sec. You have the offline systems update button. Um, and this one here is if you have the firmware on a USB stick, um, you can actually use this option after plugging it into the Xbox to update your Xbox this way. Um, and there's going to be more. There's a reason I didn't go this route, and I'll talk about that in, in a sec. And then the last one is turn off this Xbox if you decide not to do any of these options. So for this particular solution, we're going to go ahead and select the reset this Xbox button. Okay, so now that you've hit that, um, you should uh, be put into a sub menu called reset this Xbox and you're given two options. Now let me go ahead and explain these two options so that way you know what you're doing before you actually go into it. The very first option, keep games and apps. Uh, this is essentially a refresh of your Xbox. Um, essentially, it, um, it erases any of the account information on there, the save data, your settings, puts them back to default. Um, but the important thing is that if you have any digital games or apps that are installed onto the device on your Xbox, they will persist and they will re be retained. Um, so there's that option there. Um, you may have to log into your Xbox uh, Microsoft account, um, back into your, your Netflixes and, and things of that nature. Um, but this is a less evasive um, option available. The second option is remove everything. And this is like if you had a brand new Xbox straight out of the box, this is the option that you would select. For this particular solution, I chose to keep this game, keep games and apps. Um, so once I selected this option, I was able to get back into my Xbox, as you can see here. Now, hopefully this worked for you um, and that this was a viable solution. We went through three different scenarios that could be it. We did a, a hard reboot of the Xbox. We removed all the cables from the Xbox and plugged them back in. And then the last step was to refresh. Uh, these are some common uh, troubleshooting techniques that I prefer to use um, when trying to diagnose an issue. Now, you might be asking, how or why did this happen? I have a couple of theories um, on this one here. Um, so my, my leading theory on this is um, I, I have the Xbox Insider Edition where I beta test things before they actually get pushed out to the public. Um, I have a sneaking suspicion that the uh, update that does it automatically may have just corrupted um, during the download or, or maybe it was a bad bad push um, causing the system not to be stable um, and once I was able to reset that back to factory settings it looks like it kind of corrected that issue um, firmware can have that that impact on any software that you do if it doesn't download correctly um, if there's any type of interference during the download or installation process you could have hiccups like this. The fact that so many people were having this particular issue at about the same time leads me to believe that this is what it was. Um, there hasn't, I don't believe that there was an official announcement about it. I believe Microsoft is aware of it um, off of some social media posts um, from the, from their account and some, um, I believe in some message boards. I, I saw that there were, uh, there were that suggestions that they were looking into it. Um, but as of today, I am not aware of any official fix to this. Um, it's been about two weeks since I've done this particular method and my Xbox has worked normal with no particular issues. So hopefully this fix worked for you. Um, if it did, please go ahead and put a comment in the sec in the comment section below. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Share this out to anyone that you know is having the issue as well. Thank you so much for your time. Y'all know the drill. Keep it real.